Human rights and freedoms are essential for democracy to work. A democracy without human rights and freedoms is like a banana split without the banana, a computer without a keyboard, a bicycle without pedals, a game without rules. Since in a democracy it is the will of the people that gives the government its authority to rule, elections must be free and fair. And free and fair elections won't happen without basic rights and freedoms. In Canada, our rights and freedoms are protected by a document called the Charter. It's part of a larger document called the Constitution, which is something like a rule book that lays out how powers are divided among levels of government, the courts, and other institutions. Our Charter ensures that our rights and freedoms are respected and honored in all levels of government, in the laws they create, and in the programs and services they provide for Canadians. Our Charter guarantees certain freedoms for everyone. Freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion and expression, including freedom of the press and other media, freedom of peaceful assembly, and freedom of association. These freedoms are the seeds of democracy. They guarantee that we can express ideas freely in speech and in print, congregate with those who share our ideas, criticize the government, propose solutions to social problems, and publicly assemble in protest or support of political action. Remember, a democratic government remains in power only so long as it has the support of the people it represents. By contrast, for example, in Cuba, where there's an absence of some of these freedoms, such as freedom of the press, the same government has been in power for over 50 years. Our charter ensures that every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination, and in particular, without discrimination based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. However, this guarantee of equal protection and benefit does not prevent the creation of certain laws and programs that favor people who, historically, have not been treated equally. For example, federal and provincial governments have programs aimed at improving job opportunities, social services, and education for many groups that have been disadvantaged in the past. The Charter also protects your right to vote and run in an election, have a fair trial if accused of a crime, and be presumed innocent until proven guilty, have life, liberty, and security of your person, and communicate with the federal government in either of the nation's official languages. The courts of Canada, and specifically the Supreme Court, are responsible for administering our Charter. Using the Charter as a guide, the court decides what counts as wrongful discrimination and what counts as infringement upon your fundamental rights and freedoms. For example, it was a court that made a ruling which laid the groundwork for the legislation of same-sex marriage. It was a court that decided that a racist teacher in New Brunswick who was insulting and disrespecting the beliefs of his Jewish students could not use his charter right of free expression as a shield to continue doing so in a public school. It was a court that decided that people like Richard Sauvé, a convicted murderer, prisoner, and former member of Satan's Choice Biker Gang, still have the right to vote in elections. And it was a court that decided that school principals have the right to search any student's locker without a warrant if they suspect there are drugs or dangerous weapons inside. The charter can even be changed and improved with changing times. There are two avenues. Our charter changes a little bit every time a new ruling is made by the Supreme Court. The justices of the court refer to the Constitution and Charter as a living tree rather than something that's frozen in time. They use the charter in a way that allows it to adapt, accommodate, and address the realities of modern life. For example, as the lifestyles of gays and lesbians have become increasingly accepted in our society, the Supreme Court has adapted by recognizing our charter rights and freedoms as a basis for legalizing same-sex marriage. Similarly, the Court's understanding of our rights to privacy have changed since the dawn of computers and the internet. These types of changes are considered natural, just like a living tree grows. 
the rulings of the Supreme Court allow parts of the tree to grow. The other way for the charter to change is by using the amending formula. The amending formula is the only way elected officials can change any of the rules of our Constitution, including the Charter. In order to make a change, the support of the Canadian Parliament is required, as well as at least seven provincial legislatures, representing at least half of all Canadians. In other words, at least seven provinces, including at least one of the biggies, Ontario or Quebec. So, let's say you wanted to add a new right to our Charter. Environmentalists, for example, have suggested that the Charter should recognize our right to a healthy environment. In order to guarantee such a right, the amending formula would have to be used. The Living Tree has many caretakers. The Canadian Parliament and provincial legislatures are responsible for adding and removing branches, and the courts prune those branches. Because the Constitution and Charter are difficult to change, they are a strong guarantee of our continuing rights and freedoms. At the same time, some people worry that they are much too difficult to change, even when there might be a really good reason to do so. Got more questions? Ask us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our previous videos.